Hello, and welcome back to the Faloons ASMR channel. I am your host, Faloons, and I have a very exciting episode today. It completely revolves around this box right here. This box was sent to me from Greg's G R E G S U U S E D Books 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 B O K S <laughs> If you are interested in the very best used books that you could get your hands on, I encourage you to check out Greg's used books. He has an Instagram that he posts his books on, and you can have your pick of the litter. They're all really cool. Support small businesses. Support bookstores. I was blown, 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 blown away by the package when I received it. The exterior had so much thought and attention placed into it. Are you itching to see what's covering this box? You're in for a treat. Let's pay homage to this box. First of all, it's about 50 pounds. As you can see. <laughs> and on the cover are butterflies, 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 butterflies. I have to balance it on my shoulder because it is that heavy. So we have one side with butterflies, 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 butterflies. One entire side. And then, <laughs> dedicated to fish, we have a striped sea anemone. We have a carp, 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 carp. We have a yellow catfish. We have a burfish and a tom cod. And I am sweating, but we will continue on. Now here you see we have some friends. This is a witch. <laughs> and then we have the cover. cover has blue jays, the ace of wands, the empress, the three of cups, tarot cards, a UFO, and an alien invasion, which basically summarizes my entire life. Alright, before my arms break, we're gonna get into this sucker, okay? Now, I'm going to shp, 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 cut it from the south side or the back, because I don't want to ruin the art piece. Okay. So, the first thing that I see is a wave world. the imagination. I have seen the future of horror, and it is named Clive Parker. 
He is so good that I am almost literally tongue-tied. He makes the rest of us look like we've been asleep for the past ten years. That's a quote from Stephen King right there for Weave World. There's a seahorse inside. Do you see the seahorse? is the realm of the meaning of things. In the kingdom of the cuckoo. Seems like the perfect book for me. I am excited to read Weave World. I like the cover with the eye that seems to be looking into another world. And what looks like an eclipse in the top corner. And the tapestry. the next book. Hans Prinzhorn, Artistry of the Mentally Ill. It has what I'm assuming is artistry. We have some figures, some illustrations. What does this page say? It is improbable that the drawer, a simple artisan, found these concepts in museums. Today, nearly 50 years after its first publication in German, Artistry of the Mental Ill by Hans Prinzhorn remains a classic concerning the borderland between psychiatry and art, illness and self-expression. The drawings, paintings, and sculptures collected and analyzed by Prinzhorn are the products of artistically untrained and unpracticed persons, inmates of asylum. This book represents one of the first attempts to analyze the artistic work of the mentally ill. Completely spontaneous, they are in sharp contrast to more recent collections, which are products of occupational therapy or psychotherapy. Before Prince Horn, works by the mentally ill were considered curiosities, never the subject of scientific or artistic analysis. However, to Prinzhorn, they were the eruptions of a universal human creative urge, counteracting the autistic tendencies toward isolation. Prinzhorn demonstrates surprising parallels between his collection and those by children, and between ancient Greek cultures and primitive ones. The book covers the psychological foundations of pictorial compositions, the pictures and results and problems. I'm very excited to dive into this one, as I'm sure I will be for all of the remaining books as well. All right. All right. Let's go. Uh, this is a giant 3D fairy tale. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland.
this will be a great bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Alice who had a very curious dream. They made 3D models of Alice in Wonderland. And that's what fills the book. I wish they were all holographic. But it's pretty crazy. Especially this. I can't get over this. <laughs> what a trip. And now, looking backward, 2000. By Edward Bellamy, if I'm saying that right. An amazing book written over 50 years ago that foretells much of today and tomorrow. Oh. We have a very old newspaper clipping of Miss Ruth Billinghurst, a talented daughter. Crazy. Look at what portraits used to look like. Who is this woman? This relic. That newspaper clipping was found on page 130, and I will read. It has been an era of unexampled intellectual splendor. Probably humanity never before passed through a moral and material evolution. At once so vast in its scope and brief in its time of accomplishment as that from the old order to the new in the early part of the century. When men came to realize the felicity that had befallen them and that the change through which they had passed was not merely an improvement in details of their condition, but the rise to a new plane of existence, with an illimitable vista of progress, their minds were affected in all their faculties with a stimulus of which the outburst of the medieval renaissance offers a suggestion but faint indeed. There ensued an era of mechanical invention, scientific discovery, art, musical, and literary productiveness to which no previous age of the world offers anything comparable. This is the envisioning of a utopia, as it says inside on this book, which is priced at $2.50. Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy, 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 was first published in 1887 and purports to be an account of conditions in the year 2000. It is no idle picture of a wished-for utopia. It pictures a definite scheme for industrial organization on a national basis, with an equal share in the products of industry allotted to all people. Edward Bellamy Bellamy, who wrote the book, was a profound believer in human liberty, and his book shows how a highly organized industrial society can yet provide a social order that includes real liberty and real equality. Fascinating. I will read and report back, most definitely. Meditative Magic, The Pleiadian Glyphs By Judith Diana Winston Atonement, The Celestial Messenger A workbook of mandalas for spiritual self-reliance Sounds nice. Here's the cover. The Pleiadian glyphs comprise a remarkable tool for personal transformation, organized in the form of an easy-to-follow workbook with a separate set of meditation cards. These 16 sacred geometry symbols contain patterns of consciousness. There are more possible pathways in the brain than there are atoms in the universe. PBS series, The Brain. The purpose of the Pleiadian glyphs is to articulate those pathways within a particular frequency band. The 
Pleiadian glyphs activate the higher evolutionary frequencies, the turn-on brain patterns that exist in potential for higher states of being. The Pleiadian glyphs were channeled by visionary artist Judith Diana Winston over a three-year period. This followed eight years of travel, visiting and photographing many of the Earth's most ancient sacred sites. During her travels, Judith Diana began intuitively to understand the importance of geometric formations incorporated in these powerful places. This included the pyramids, Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, and Easter Island. Guided by a Pleiadian energy, Enil, she was encouraged to share the geometric patterns that increasingly came to her in meditation. Judith Diana was told that Enil is a member of a Pleiadian soul family who have contracted to work with the human race in its conscious evolution into the 21st century. The glyphs are essentially a meditation device which affects the viewer in a holistic way. They can easily be used by the seasoned meditator, as well as those who are new to meditation. This is published by the Chunut Press, Grounding Higher Dimensional Frequencies, Santa Monica. I wonder if there are still presses like that. Oh. I guess we should look at some of these mandalas, huh? Do they slide out? Oh, they open. Okay. Okay. This one is called Synergy. The Flow of the Universal Force and it is pronounced Esar. Synergy is the wave of the future. I won't go into reading all of it. This is the power of the imagination, pronounced Sargon. And one last one. This is a car. Trust the vehicle for spiritual wisdom. Published in 1994. Very exciting. I'll see what comes of staring at these for long periods of time. And now we have Far From Home. Really cool cover, huh? Look at that. Look at that. There are some clues. Another eye. Where was that eye? Where was that eye? Where was that? There's the eye. Another eye on another book. And what does it say in Far From Home? Here's what it says in the far from home. Walter Tevis uses his mind here like a lens to split the cosmos into universes. This startling collection will allow the reader a glimpse into the playful, bizarre, and psychologically profound world of one of science fiction's greatest writers. This compilation of speculative fiction and fantasy stories by the best-selling author of The Man Who Fell to Earth and Mockingbird, comprises both reprints and original fiction. The stories in part one have appeared in such magazines as Galaxy, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, while part two of this volume contains stories written especially for this collection. The result is a heady concoction of illuminating and frightening tales that propel the reader through unexplored corridors and into the distant corners of the Tevis universe. 
am I ready? I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of sci-fi accumulate here. A lot of frighteningly disturbing sci-fi. Hopefully I'll be able to sleep at night. How many electrodes are in that thing? Arthur said. Mel gave him an irritated look. More than anyone could count, buddy. He was checking some of the connections of the coils that went from the big tape recorder to the helmet. They were as profuse on the helmet as Medusa's snakes. Just opened to echo. Echo, echo, echo. Funny. Far from home. Aren't we all? Gathering the tribes. Carolyn Forge. At first I thought Mount Rushmore was on the cover. At second glance, I'm going to need to read the synopsis. Poetry. What a lovely looking lady. The language and images of Carolyn Forge's poetry are so closely bound to the natural cycles of the seasons, of generations, of the bodies functioning, that it is surprising to realize how many of her poems deal with uprootedness, hasty immigrations from Czechoslovakia and Kiev, the loss of grandparents and other elders, people leaving and being sent away. But this poetry is not a sentimental celebration of the goodness of nature and harmony with the world is never something assumed. The harmony Forge seeks goes deeper than simple submission to natural processes or identification with an ethnic group, and it must be fought for with a tenuous faith. The way she captures the tenuousness of this faith, the balance that must be found between the ugliness, the harshness of her history, both natural and social, and its intense beauty is what distinguishes Forge's poetry, gives it its depth. Near Lone Pine, remote men spit out chew. Moose lope, unbroken snows, their branches scooping the creek of the woods. With their toes, they melt the field. Everything happens in the same space. What has been and what is becoming are all of the same age. The days here draw on like a rock full of sun. Quiet paw holes of a herd in the fall, and men, quiet because of their lives, call down moose from the mountain. I dig it. We have always lived in the castle. 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 There are two ladies between these curtains, staring out, giving the vibe that they have always lived in the castle. That's, that's the takeaway I'm getting here. All is peaceful at the Blackwood Estate until a murder strikes. Mary Cat Blackwood lives on the family estate with her sister Constance and her uncle, Julian. Not long ago, there were seven Blackwoods, until a fatal dose of arsenic found its way into the sugar bowl one terrible night. Acquitted of the murders, Constance has returned home, where Mary Cat protects her from the curiosity and hostility of the villagers. Their days pass in happy isolation, until Cousin Charles appears. Only Mary can see the danger, and she must act swiftly to keep Constance from his grasp. A marvelous elucidation of life, a story full of craft and full of mystery, the New York Times book review. A penguin book. 
A witch's brew of eerie power and startling novelty. Shirley Jackson. I am intrigued. What does, will this book have in store for me? I am not sure. Arsenic in the sugar bowl. I had to move the box a bit further away because with this microphone, everything clanks and clamors when you move a fraction of an inch. So I thought this might be easier to not impede into the video. Okay. The Heavy Drip. Louis Yablonsky. A first-hand account, a first-hand account of the beliefs and behaviors of hippies in America by a noted sociologist. The cover is reminiscent of Artistry of the Mentally Ill. I hope not on purpose. Hippies aren't mentally ill. Do hippies still exist, real hippies? it tells me on the back. The hippie movement is a spontaneous evolution. It is not a heavy worked out plan. There's a psychedelic creed. There's a psychedelic creed. Drugs are a key to the god in men. Drugs are sacraments for a greater knowledge of the universe. Drugs are a vehicle cosmic consciousness. Sounds a bit like the Wook methodology. There are spontaneous leaders in the movement. They are not pushy leaders who are self-appointed. They are selected by hippie constituents because they are spiritual centers. Sex is free, holy, and should be naturally acted out without guilt for pure pleasure and communication. The establishment and the police are not the enemy. They are a constant reminder that the trip into the universal unity of man was never meant to be easy. Communes are places where people can, quote, do their thing, use psychedelic drugs, seek their personal freedom, and identify with a minimum amount of hang-ups and interferences. Sounds like Hell's Angels. Violence is a result of frustrations and repressions. You can't change anyone else. You can only be yourself. A true hippie believer would not get hung up with heavy game playing, the new left, war protests, or civil rights battles. He simply would strengthen his own perceptions of honesty and truth. Children should not have the heavy trips of their parents put onto them. They should have the freedom to naturally evolve in their own line of growth. And finally, number 10 of the psychedelic creed. People should stop playing heavy games as in work, marriage, or the general plastic society. They should, as Leary postulates, quote, turn on, tune in, and drop out, end quote. In this more natural state of reality, with the aid of drugs, they will find their true spiritual condition. With the aid of drugs. Baby trip. Louis Yablonski. Yablonski, Yablonski, Yablonski. Yablonski, Yablonski. Oh, there's a chapter on Big Sur, as there should be. There's a chapter on tuning in. Tribes, teeny boppers, and loving dope pushers. The Morning Star Bummer. Red, white, and blue. Psychedelic drugs. The Agony and the Ecstasy. This is going to be a ride. Or a trip. Next. Next. How to Know the Mosses. A popular guide to the mosses of the Northeastern United States. By Elizabeth Marie Dunham. Perhaps the most important book. The most practical book. 
this handbook of mosses, the first intended for use without a microscope, crazy, throws open a new and fascinating field of study to the amateur botanist and nature lover. Keys to 80 genera and descriptions of over 150 species are given. of mosses. The capsules of mosses. This is great. Shapes of the upper column. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Convex, short-beaked, long-beaked. Do you know about mosses? Do you? I could educate you soon. The names in here. Didymodon, Barbula, 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 Barbula. Barbula convoluta grows on the ground in rather dry places. Wow. Physocometrium, Physocometrium. Funaria K. Funaria. Funaria is Polytrich. Polytrichicae, polytrichicae. Dear gosh, I'm so severed. Are there a lot of botanists roaming around? Do they only hang out together? Where can I find them? I don't know a single person that knows a single thing about mosses. Gosh. You know, I know a lot of people that are into herbs. And then I started thinking about bacterial mats and geysers. Those are my specialties. Mosses and bacterial mats and geysers. Aspirations. And to follow up the mosses. Flowers of Evil by Baudelaire. By Baudelaire. What a beautiful cover. It's a woman a woman with skeleton flowers. This book was $1.25. Oh my gosh, the art. The art is exquisite. I love that. Oh wow. universe wherein all things were mysteriously and mystically interrelated. His technical virtuosity of image and music would have made him a genius in any time. What about in the social media age? Oh, this is great. Wow, and the print is just so nice. I'm excited. I'm excited. Flowers of evil. Discover the secret teachings at the heart of Western thought. The figure of Hermes was venerated as a great and mythical teacher in the ancient world, and was rediscovered by some of the finest minds of the Renaissance. The writings attributed to his hand are a time capsule of Egyptian and Greek esoteric philosophy and have influenced figures including Blake, Newton, Milton, Shelley, Shakespeare, Botticelli, Leonardo da Vinci, and Young. Here is the first truly accessible compendium of the mystical philosophy attributed to the legendary sage god Hermes Trismegistus, Greek for thrice greatest Hermes, a combination of the Egyptian Thoth 
The Hermetica is a fascinating introduction to the intersection of the Egyptian and Hellenic cultures and the magico-religious ideas of the antique world. It is an essential and illuminating volume for anyone interested in understanding the West's roots in Egyptian and esoteric thought. Clutch. Let's look at clutch. The birth of human culture. The circle of time. The living cosmos. The being of Adam. The prophecies of Hermes. Alright, so we have sci-fi. We have We have botany. We have mysticism. We've got some good friends here. And then we have uninvited visitors. <laughs> oh my gosh. A biologist looks at UFOs. So we have power lines. We have another hologram. UFOs be. What do they do? Shape and substance of UFOs. Other strange things. Could UFOs be alive? Wow. Uninvited visitors. Biology is author Ivan T. Sanderson specialty, and it is from a biological standpoint that this book investigates the greatest unsolved mystery of our age, the mystery of UFOs. Using exacting scientific methodology, Sanderson leads the reader on a remarkable intellectual journey. Supported by his own research and documented reports, he delves deep into the heart of problems that most other scientists shy away from and most laymen have never been exposed to. What could UFOs be? Where do they come from? When did they start coming? What would they want from us? You know, I have to take a break here and just say that my imagination is so insane that in the middle of reading this, I had a full vision and thought, wouldn't it be kind of funny or weird if all of a sudden, in the middle of just recording this, a UFO beam just fully entered into the scene and, you know, <laughs> but I saw it all and it felt so real anyway. What would they want from us? Sanderson's theories may shock, amaze, even anger readers, but no thoughtful person can ignore them. Heck, yes. How do we know they weren't invited, though? Who are we to say they weren't invited? Maybe we are the uninvited visitors. Cool. And here we have Wampadeers, Foma, and Grand Falloons by Kurt Von. to the reader Kurt Vonnegut Jr. writes, the title of this book is composed of three words from my novel, Cat's Cradle. A Wampadeer, or Wampadeer, is an object around which the lives of many otherwise unrelated people may revolve. The Holy Grail would be a case in point. Foma are harmless untruths intended to comfort simple souls. An example, prosperity is just right. A grand balloon is a proud and meaningless association of human beings. Taken together, the words form as good an umbrella as any for this collection of some of the reviews and essays I have written. A few of the speeches I have made. Most of my speeches were never written down. This collection shows the novelist Kurt Vonnegut Jr. attempting to speak directly and truthfully about real life. Real life as opposed to fiction. And on the cover you see... What do you see? Tell me. I'll let you decide. And on the back, with two tags on his head, 
which say J9040, and we're stuck here. They didn't come on the cover. No idea what that means. Perhaps a secret message. Code to piece together. My father told me, too, what he supposed the happiest day in the life of his father had been. My paternal grandfather was probably happiest as a boy in Indiana, sitting with a friend on the cowcatcher of a moving locomotive. The locomotive was puffing from Indianapolis to Louisville. There was some wilderness still, and the bridges were made of wood. When night fell, the sky was filled with fireworks from the stack of the locomotive. What could be nicer than that? Nothing. My father and grandfather were good artists. I'm sorry they can't be here today. They deserved your warm company in this cool too. Another exciting addition. The Lucia, Lucia, Lucia. The Lucia color test. We have the colors of the color test on the cover, I'm assuming. The remarkable test that reveals your personality through color. And we have a card that says zero, zero. Perhaps part of the color test. Or not. The principle of the Lucia color test is that accurate psychological information can be gained about a person through their choices and rejections of colors. A simplified version of the test may be taken and interpreted quickly, and the layman can administer it to himself even before reading this book. In fact, it is advisable that he do so. Reading the text beforehand might prejudice his color selections. By simply following the instructions, which explain how to use the eight bound-in color cards in the interpretation tables, the reader will find how psychologically revealing color choices can be. So that was part of the book. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. Oh, they're just, they're just stashed in here. I don't think I have them all. I have seven. I have five. I have the winning lotto numbers. I have one. I have four. I have two. They just keep manifesting out of thin air. I have six. I have zero. Wow, I can't even believe that many made it this many years. All right, so I'm missing, I'm missing three. I'm missing number three. Someone must have not have liked <gasps> Okay, okay, okay. How many were there supposed to be? Eight, so unfortunately my phone storage reached capacity in the middle of the color test. So we're gonna keep moving along because I am having trouble offloading as well with the bigger files. So there's three things left, three things left, three things left. And we have the secret life of flowers right here. The secret life of flowers. To add to the botany section. By Anne Ophelia Dowden. Anne Ophelia Dowden. There are flowers on the cover, as you can see. Flowers, flowers, flowers. And it shows you the different flowers and their pollinators, which is incredible because that's something I never learned in school. How did we not learn that in school? Oh my gosh. Wow, and the illustrations, the illustrations are lovely. Wow. This is so nice. We have Repo Man, which is a film, actually, a quintessential cult film of the 1980s. Alex Cox's singular sci-fi comedy stars the always captivating Harry Dean Stanton as a weathered Repo Man in a desolate Los Angeles, and Emilio Estevez as the nihilistic middle-class punk he takes under his wing. The job becomes more than either of them bargained for when they get involved in repossessing a mysterious with a hefty reward attached to it. Featuring the ultimate early 80s LA punk soundtrack, this grungely hilarious odyssey is also a politically trenchant take on President Reagan's domestic and foreign policies. The plot doth ever thicken. The plot doth ever thicken. Doth and it. Working. 
Crystals, a revolutionary video gem on VHS. Accessible Comprehensive, this video cassette may be used in conjunction with the Complete Crystal Guidebook. In this high-tech recording of a live workshop at the Humanandai Institute in Mill Valley, California, Uma and her husband Ramana Das demonstrate some of the newest in potential crystal techniques and practices. Timely practical suggestions and comments on crystal work are interspersed throughout the tape. One to three minute segments allow for maximum instructional use and fewer absorption. Tape can be stopped to practice each exercise or Format is easy to follow and of carefully designed to cover some of the most important aspects of using crystals effectively and safely. This video cassette also features Uma and Ramana Das's sharing the musical energies of their sound performances with segments of Tibetan bulls, singing bulls, and ninjas. Look at them together. Doesn't that make your heart melt? Working with crystals, the final in this incredible box. This was a jam packed box. Thanks so much to Craig from Craig's Used Books for blessing with so many interesting books, which will definitely be making the rounds in future videos. A review video is in order once I can get through all of these. And now that I can hold